Today I want to talk to you about angles, acreages, tail slippage, and planes. And no, it's not going to be about crop dusting. Welcome back to Worth the Ever Woodworking. Today, instead of a tips video, I want to do a little bit of an, an analysis. Kind of like an athlete looking back at videos of himself to see what's going on and see how you can improve it. I want to give you a little bit of more knowledge so that you can see the flexibility of some of your hand tools, specifically planes. Now what I have right here is a Stanley number no. 4. This is the most generic thing in the world. And very traditionally these planes are set up where the bevel is right at 45 degrees. I mean that is extremely standard. In fact, people like me that build our own planes, we do the same exact thing. You set the bevel at angle at 45 degrees and that is the angle that the blade is interacting with the wood because while we might sharpen a bevel at 30 degrees whenever we place it in the plane blade that blade is generally lifted up a little bit because you need a little bit of clearance behind the blade because in actuality once you slice it the wood springs back a little bit and if you did it stride at 45 degrees well, it would be springing black into the blade and push it up and then it'd stop cutting. You need that little bit of a clearance angle. So, most of the time we have our blades set up in our planes at right at 45 degrees. Now, some people actually do high angle blade uh, frogs in their hand planes so that they can kick it up to about 50 or 55 degrees. But very rarely do you see a low angle plane in this style. That's generally what we uh, go to uh, bevel up planes like this right here where the blade is laying down really flat like that but we've actually reversed it upside down so that the bevel is coming in this way but notice we are back to that for the most part 45 degrees and once again you can actually bring this bevel back a little bit to lower it and you can steepen it to raise it so the interaction with the wood is generally in that 50 down to 35 degree angle for most hand plants whether they are bevel up or bevel down now if i was going to joint a board so that i can glue another board in there and be nice and smooth and straight whenever i use my hand plane i am actually interacting with the wood at whatever angle i have the blade set in the plane and because this is a bevel down plane it would be the bed angle which is 45 degrees so I'm actually working with this wood with this plane interacting at 45 degrees because in theory well I'm going to pretend that it was a bevel up plane there's that 45 degrees the wood is actually going straight up the blade so when you're coming down here this angle right there is the 45 degrees because this is the angle the wood is traveling. But when I'm working the face of a board, that isn't always the case. Yes, a lot of people will come over here and they're gonna go straight across to get their shavings, coming straight across. But I want you to watch a lot of experts. Most of the time when I see really advanced guys using it, they're grabbing the, they're using the tote like this, and if you watch it from the ang front, they're not going straight across. They're actually angling it ever so slightly as they work their way across. Because it's kind of uncomfortable to do it this way. This is much more uncomfortable. Your hand just sits in here. And there are a lot of other reasons. I want you to think about this. I've got my hand plane right here. I'm going to put it right up in the corner. Then this area right here is the only area this plane is referencing. But if I were to do the same exact thing and skew it, all of a sudden, my plane is now referencing all of this area. It's actually referencing not only more space side to side but notice more space front to back because i've tilted it now if i were to start using this hand plane this way and i end up having high spots at this spot here here or here or here or anywhere for example maybe if the boat board's cupped a little bit all i'm going to be doing is making the trench between those high spots a little bit lower but if i were to skew it ever so slightly 
In fact, the distance I'm actually cutting is a little bit less because when you skew it, you're bringing that blade a little bit narrow in the presentation going this way. But these corners right here, these sides are riding up a little bit higher. So I'm not going to be cutting that center lower section. And as I move over, well, all of a sudden, this is low, this is high. I'm now cutting off of that high spot. So as I work my way across, I'm actually referencing more of the board as I move it. So in fact, if I'm trying to flatten the board, that might be the proper way to do it. But think about what just happened with the angle here. When I'm moving my blade straight across the wood, the wood is traveling up my blade this distance. If I were to turn around and skew it a little bit, now this wood is traveling this distance. A much greater distance. And if you understand triangles, if you have the hypotenuse of one triangle longer than the other, and the distance traveling up is the same, well, this angle right here has to be lower. Can you see that? So in effect, by me planing all my stuff at a slight angle, I'm no longer planning at 45 degrees. I'm planning at a much lower angle. Well, I don't know the exact ang angle down. But all of a sudden, I now have control of what I'm doing with the angle. I can come straight up and down. Can you hear the change of the sound? I can come over the side and do it. The angle of the wood interacting with that blade changes, the sound changes, but you also get different shavings, you get different finishes, that kind of stuff. So there might be a reason why some people in the old days would put a higher angle on their smoothing planes, mainly because they wanted it to be at 45 degrees, but their natural use was to use it as a slight skew. Now this is not to say that one technique, kicking the tail out of your plane out a little bit, is better than keeping it tucked in. There are going to be times when you want that dead perfect 45 degree angle. Maybe you're going through something curly and that higher angle will give you less chance of tear out. There might be times that you're working with a hand plane. It's locked in. You can't change it. You're cursing at yourself for not buying a low angle bevel up plane because maybe it's just super smooth like this pine and easy and you just want to make a day's work go easier. Or maybe you're hitting things like knots. So with this right here, you could be working straight on something like oak or something like that. And then there's a knot right there and you can work it straight. And then when you get to the knot, skew it a little bit so that you can lower the bevel angle and make cutting through that knot a lot easier because it is easier to cut through wood at a lower angle. One's not better or worse, but when you understand what's going on between that edge and the wood fibers moving across it, it just gives you a lot more flexibility. So I want you to think about this. When would you want to skew it? When would you always want to keep it straight? Would planning something across a grain, like with a scrub plane, be beneficial to skew at all? Or do you actually want it to be straight so it's referencing the longest distance this way as opposed to this way when you're going across a grain? There's a lot of variables to think about, and I hope I'm just kind of opening up your imagination and thought processors right now. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like, favorite, subscribe, do all those social medias, visit my website, even have a Patreon if you want to support me doing more of these. And remember that it is always worth the effort to learn, create, make a mess, and share it with others. Y'all be safe and have fun. Since I was using this hand plane today, for the bonus, I thought I would talk about one of my favorite tools, or maybe I should say one of my favorite tool manufacturers. Ron Hawk has been out in our little niche uh, woodworking world for a long time. Uh, you can look at uh, his website, hawktools.com, but he kind of specializes in making really great
plain blades. And it was one of the first in this kind of artisanal market to really do that one. And yes, he makes other stuff, but his main focus is hand plane blades. So if you have something like a Bailey or something like that, and you want to maybe get a thicker blade or something like that, at least look into him. His prices are really competitive for the quality he does. He, he makes high carbon uh, tool steel blades. Pretty much he got into it because of James Krenov. Really nicely designed chip breakers. I, I never have a problem. I never really have to tune it up. Whereas on the Baileys I do. I, I just can't say enough about them. They're one of my favorite uh, uh, tools. The blades take an edge easy. They hold the edge for a good long time because of the high carbon content. And they're easily adjustable in my block planes because of his design. So go check him out, hocktools.com, I believe. But if you just say Hawk Tools, you'll know who he is. And if you're looking for a replacement blades, it's a good, good option.